Welcome to Unthinkable. I'm Jay Kunzo, and it's time for another slingshot. Short stories about people's side projects and how they launch them somewhere surprising. We do these every other week to figure out the answer to one question. What happens when you turn your intuition into action? I don't know if you do this at all, but there are certain authors that I read certain books, and I'll stumble on a sentence and I'll just start to laugh. And I'm not laughing because it was a funny sentence, I'm laughing because I'm just, I'm awed at the craft that went into those like eight words. And I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. This is Jonathan Fields. He runs an educational media company called The Good Life Project and a very popular podcast of the same name. And Jonathan's love of great writing has led him to publish multiple books in his career even though he says he can't possibly justify the time he spends doing it. As a result, he calls writing his irrational side calling. I look at all the different things, the activities that I could be doing to contribute to my living and also my ability to support myself. And I break down on, you know, like a dollars per hour basis, how much this actually generates. It's really hard to justify the amount of time that it takes to write a book. Jonathan has published two books so far, and even though it'd be easy for you or me to look at his career and assume he's made it, he knows that it still takes a ton of preparation to write well. Nonfiction, for me, it's like that classic parable or the question, I think it was asked of Abe Lincoln, you know, if you had if you had eight hours to chop down a tree, what would you do? And he said, I would spend six hours sharpening the axe. For his third book, Jonathan's first idea was to write about why humans crave a sense of belonging. As I started to go deep into the the research on it, there's a lot of academic research and it was all over the place. So he scrapped the idea and thus the bizarre odyssey of Jonathan Field's third book began. It all started when he went back to his publisher and he said, look, that original idea I pitched you, I can't do it. But here's a bigger idea that I found along the way. I want to write about how to live a good life. I then wrote the entire manuscript, and I thought we were all on the same page. I felt good about it. That probably took about another nine months. I handed it in to them, and they came back to me, and they said, uh, this isn't it. we got to do something else. Ugh, not what any author wants to hear. But it wasn't Jonathan's first rodeo, so he had a meeting, found a new direction, and wrote that entire manuscript. And then... This is where it actually got a bit more devastating because I turned in that manuscript and I felt pretty solid about it. And they came back to me a couple of weeks later. Actually, they, I think it was a little more than a couple of weeks, which should have been a tell to me. And when they finally came back to me, they said, this isn't it either. And we don't know what to tell you anymore. And I was like, wow, um, OK, where do I go from here? Jonathan approached his publisher, and he admitted, hey, it's clear I don't actually understand the kinds of books that you like to publish in this genre, but I know I can figure this out. So just give me a few weeks, let me go do some research, and I'll come back to you. And so he went out and he purchased the top 10 personal development books currently available on the market. Read them, and it and it became crystal clear to me that there was a pretty consistent pattern across all of them. So I reworked the table of contents for that pattern. I showed it to them and I said, is this it? And they were like, yes, yes, like that, that looks like it's finally it. And then I said to them, I said, well, that's cool. I said, but I need to actually figure out whether I'm comfortable writing this book. Now, the idea of writing a formulaic book wasn't so appealing to Jonathan. Remember, this is a guy that loves that gut feel about writing, the way it makes you laugh when it's just impossibly good. But he's still committed to trying it. And he wrote four to five chapters and realized... It made it actually so much easier for me to write. And I realized that I could still weave in a lot of the story and the science, which I really love to explore in a way that was just so much more accessible than I had normally written. And what I did to really keep driving through it too, was I set as my new creative challenge um, to write a book. You know, so, so every creative challenge or campaign needs a set of constraints. So for me, the constraints were I wanted to, to teach myself how to write a book given this sort of new paradigm, this new approach. I want, want to understand how to work with it. And that became my creative task. 
And um, so I went ahead and I wrote it and turned it in. And finally, after the third one, I felt really good about it and really strongly about it. So strong that if they they hadn't liked it at that point, um, there's a good chance I would have walked away from the deal. Um, but thankfully, they loved it and I loved it. And, um, and, and we've been rocking and rolling since then. Being craft driven as a creator is just as much about the how as the why. Because creativity is so much more than just gut feel. That's a big part of it, but it's also about studying the process that helps you go from intuition to action. And what I realized is if I really want to not just write, but also be of service, that that was a pretty powerful approach. Too often, we associate constraints and frameworks with the people or projects that aren't overly creative. But because you have that internal drive, that desire to do things the right way, understanding how to structure your work actually enables better creativity. And at first, that fact surprised Jonathan. It shouldn't have been a surprise. It was a surprise that I was okay with it because I tend to also be a bit of a rebel. <laughs> but I've also done a lot of research on creativity, and the research is crystal clear. Constraints enhance creativity. I mean, there's no debate about it anymore. We can fight it. We can argue with it. But it, it is very – it's just – it's a fact that if you have to work within a set of constraints, that those constraints are going to lead you to think differently, to think better, to dig deeper, and to come up with solutions, ideas, and output that you wouldn't have come up with. So every major book, from The Alchemist to all, all sorts of other things, you know, it follows the hero's journey. Many of the biggest epic movies follow some variation of the hero's journey. There's this blend of constraint enhancing creativity and simultaneously we're wired in a way where we like to get the experience dished out in a particular way even if we publicly rail against it under the hood we actually want it in the end if you want to bet on your intuition stay open you know probably the single biggest enemy of uh, the creative process and any creator is to lose your beginner's mind and so I think part of our job as people who are creative in the world is to hold ourselves in a place uh, where we're open to the unknown for longer than we're comfortable with um, and to go into something, even if there's something in us that says, yeah, I know this, I've got it dialed in to go in and say, OK, but I'm still a student. Like there is no person that I am incapable of learning from. And that tends to be a harder thing to do the further down the road you get. But I also think that if you can't do it, that is when your growth and your evolution tends to stall. So... If you want to follow your intuition and create more meaningful work, you need to keep your beginner's mind. And if you do, you might just turn that next challenging moment into a project you love. Now that's unthinkable. One quick note before we go, there's a lot more from my conversation with Jonathan, and I wanted to share all of it with you. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going to send it out to our newsletter. That's over at unthinkable.fm. Be sure to sign up. This is the unedited discussion about a number of things. His exploration of those top 10 books, his writing process, how using open loops makes writing addicting, and what Jonathan learned when writing his new book, How to Live a Good Life. By the way, that book drops October 18, 2016, and it's available for pre-order as well before that. So check the show notes for a link to the Amazon page to that book. I get nothing from this. I saw the transcript. I think it's a great, great read, and I hope you'll check it out. I'm Jay Kunzo. Thanks for listening to Unthinkable. See you on the newsletter, and I'll talk to you again in a week. <laughs>